Welcome back. You're watching headlines now. On to a few national stories now. With less than two months to go for the Commonwealth Games, Health Minister Gulam Nabi Azad is worried that the unfinished work at sites is contributing to the spread of dengue in the capital. The number of dengue cases in, uh, is the highest in the last six years in the capital. Today, Gulam Nabi Azad blamed CWG sites and heavy rain for the dengue. Uh, Delhi on Saturday recorded the highest single-day incidence of dengue cases this season with 36 more patients testing positive for the disease, taking the total cases to 384. The clearing may be over, the mo but the modifications continue. The cabinet may have cleared the nuclear liability bill, but NDTV has learned that it has modified the language in such a way that suppliers will be liable only if they cause the accident intentionally. In fact, sources have told NDTV that clause 17B of the bill now says right to recourse where the nuclear incident has resulted as a consequence of an act of supplier or his employees done with the intent to cause nuclear damage and such act includes supply of equipment or material with patent or latent defects or substandard devices. Now a new worry for Uttar Pradesh, four infants all below nine months have died near Lucknow after they were vaccinated for measles. All of them showed symptoms of a serious allergic reaction after probably which the deaths were caused. The health minister has now ordered an inquiry and a compensation has been announced by the Uttar Pradesh government for the families of the victims. Minutes after they were given the measles vaccine, four infants, Kumari, Sanya, Rekha and Sahil, fell seriously ill. They became breathless, began to sweat and their pulse fell rapidly. All symptoms of anaphylactic shock or a serious allergic reaction to the vaccine. And before they could get medical help at the local hospital, all four had died. <laughs> Such measles vaccine related deaths are rare but have been reported in the past. In 2008, four children died under similar circumstances in Tamil Nadu. The measles vaccination program was then suspended and the entire batch of vaccines were recalled. Clearly, inoculation drives involving injections need strict controls and better supervision. This case raises a host of questions. Why were the four children given the vaccine when they were all below nine months? Measles vaccines is given after nine months. Was there proper supervision to monitor the delivery of the vaccine? Four auxiliary nurse midwives gave the shots but were not trained to provide emergency support to the infants. The crucial question is was the vial which contained the vaccine contaminated? What we are presuming is it may be some other reason, it may be the vaccine also which, have, which was sent to this village in particular. Uh, we have taken the vaccine carrier in our custody and we will conduct all medical examinations to ascertain what went wrong. Pediatricians say that an immediate inquiry should begin and the entire batch should be pulled out of the vaccination program to establish the cause of death or else the vaccination program which is faring poorly in states like UP could suffer a serious setback. The three auxiliary nurse midwives, the medical officer and the person responsible for maintaining the vaccines have also been suspended. With Anand Zanane and Mohanlal Ganj, Uttar Pradesh, Inu Delhi, Siddharth Pandey for NDTV. Now suspected medical negligence it may be in Uttar Pradesh, but Jharkhand has a different side to tell that of the medical community. Especially in places like Bihar and Jharkhand, almost everyone who thinks there has been some kind of negligence on part of the doctors, especially in the government hospital, beats up the hapless doctors. Fed up of this, 600 doctors at Jharkhand's biggest government hospital in Ranchi have been on strike for the past five days demanding security, leaving hapless patients and a helpless administration in the lurch. It's not that no one in Ranchi needs these beds. It's just that no patients have been taken in for the past five days at the Rajendra Institute of Medical Sciences. About 600 junior doctors at this super speciality government hospital, the biggest in Jharkhand, are on strike. Their complaint, patients' relatives often assault doctors and the administration does nothing to help. The nurses' union is supporting the strike. Jharkhand 
मेडिकल हेल्थ केयर प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट लगाने के लिए अनिश्चितकालीन धरना पे बैठे हुए हैं Caught in the middle of this conflict are patients like Shatrugan, who was admitted to the hospital 10 days ago with a serious liver ailment. Liver damage and we have been admitted to the day. We have not been admitted to the doctor. We have not been admitted to the doctor. No doctor, no nurse, no nurse. The administration says it's trying to cope by calling in doctors from government hospitals across the state. One round of talks between the doctors and the management has already failed. So far, there are no signs that the stalemate will end soon. With Haribhan Sharma in Ranchi and Alok Pandey in Patna, Madhu Sudhan for NDTV. Now, there is a mood of celebration in Kerala, not only because it is the Onam season, but also because popular Congress MP from, state, from the state, Shashi Tharoor, tied the knot with Sunanda Pushkar in a traditional wedding at his ancestral house in Palakkad today. The ceremony took place in the presence of Tharoor's grandmother, Jai Shankriyamma. It was attended by close relatives of the couple. The couple are to return to Thiruvananthapuram, Tharoor's constituency, where a reception will be held. The Tharoor Sunanda relationship surfaced during the bid for the Kochi IPL team, which turned into a major controversy, forcing Tharoor to step down as the Minister of State for External Affairs. Now, the Indian government has sent a notice to internet major Google for showing Pakistan occupied Kashmir as a part of Pakistan. Google's insights for search tool has depicted POK as a part of Pakistan when it actually is still a disputed area. A year ago, Google's popular map service Google Maps was mired in controversy for showing Arunachal Pradesh as part of China. Then Google had admitted that it goofed up and rectified the mistake. On to a quick sports update, Thisara Pereira's maiden five-picket haul and some aggressive batting by Tilakaratne Dilshan and Mahila Jai Vardhane helped Sri Lanka register a thumping eight-wicket win against India. Now, with this victory, Sri Lanka have assured themselves of a place in the showpiece final on August 28th. Thisara Pereira's heroics with the ball earned him his first Man of the Match award. Sri Lanka's resounding victory was, however, marred by some controversial umpiring decisions that accounted for four Indian Order batsman. The one on the left is through to the final. Now back here in the city, we bring you the story of a sports enthusiast, someone who knows it all when it comes to sports, but who has been fighting a tough battle to realize his dreams. Uh, Deepak, I have three questions for you. Let me start with cricket. Yeah. Who is the cricketer who termed the uh, who coined the term uh, shoulder before wicket? Unfortunately, it's Sachin Tendulkar on the tour of Australia in the year 1999-2000. Got out to Glen Okay, uh, going on to tennis, um, who did Rafael Nadal uh, beat during the 2008 French Open? It's, uh, he derailed the FedEx. He beat Roger Federer. Okay, and uh, my last question to you, uh, which tennis player actually is uh, right-handed off-court but plays left-handed on court? The current Wimbledon champion, Rafael Nadal. This isn't just any boy. Born with cerebral palsy, 23-year-old Parthasarathi Srinivas Deepak is a sports wonder. Tennis, soccer, Formula 1 and even chess, he loves them all. But it is cricket, of course, that has him captivated. He got glued to sports when he was just two years old. Uh, though I follow cricket a lot, I follow other sports like tennis, soccer, chess to some extent. And, and sports keep me, keeps me motivated. Deepak's dream is to become a cricket commentator and sports analyst. But the journey has not been easy so far. All set to meet his goals, he is now doing a media course at the Asian College of Journalism. My dream is to become a sports journalist and a cricket analyst. Because cricket has been in my blood. So my, um, my family, uh, they play, uh, they have played cricket a bit. So it's in my blood and I also live the game. And believe it or not, Deepak does not like Fedra or Schumacher just because they are too predictable. In Chennai, with Zoya Thomas, Pratik Shah, NDTV Hindu. Well, and finally, the newest, most fashionable way of getting around London. Here's how the city is taking to its new ambitious cycle hire scheme. The last time I got onto a bike was at least a decade ago and since then it has been a life of unequivocal sloth. 
keeping my fingers crossed I don't fall flat on my face. Just like me, Londoners are slowly getting used to learning to enjoy the new cycle hire scheme in the densest part of the city. These spanking new blue bikes, 6,000 of them at docking stations all over central London, are now jostling for road space with the iconic red double-decker buses and black cabs. At an affordable annual membership of £45 that allows cyclists to ride the first 30 minutes for free, it is expected to generate 40,000 cycle journeys every day. Total costs over the next five years is about £180 million. Pounds. That's broken down uh, to about £82 million pounds for uh, implementation of the scheme and then about £20 million pounds per annum for operation. Now the £20 million pounds is offset by user costs because it will cost users to access the scheme and also um, sponsorship from our sponsor Barclays and they're putting in £25 million pounds over the next five years. Now every pound you put into cycling, you get three pounds in benefits back. Now some of those benefits are really tangible because if you can encourage modal shift away from the motor car, especially in dense urban environments like city centres, you get less CO2, less pollution, less congestion, better air quality, and fundamentally it's a healthy option as well, so you improve people's health. You know, it's a no-brainer. Cycling really is the cleanest, greenest form of transport. London is catching up with cities like Paris, Montreal, Berlin, Barcelona, Amsterdam that are already cyclized cities. But with a 100% increase in cycling since 2000, the time for such a scheme in London seems right. Yeah, it's very handy. Yeah, I think a lot of people in our office are really excited about it. Cycling is a lot more popular in London now. Well, London cycle usage is not at the same level as cities like Amsterdam and Copenhagen yet. But the aim is to get the city to be much more cycle friendly by the time 2012 Olympics arrive and get one in five Londoner converted to using this by 2025. Well, that was certainly one story that didn't seem like work at all. In London, Swati Maheshwari, NDTV. All right, that's all we have for you now, but up next is all the news and updates in Tamil. Stay with us.